Welcome to another AQA 2012 Comp 1 Exam Monster Game Programming Exam Solution Tutorial. Uh, we're going to look at changing the cavern size this time. This is part of the difficulty series. Uh, and this is Pest 6B, if you're following it. Um, at first glance, it looks like I want to make the cavern bigger. I can just change the constants NS distance and uh, WE distance, the north, south, and east, west distance. Um, unfortunately, that's fine for north and south, but the east and west is problematic. Basically, the horizontal lines are static outputs. Um, I'll just show you what that means. Okay, if I leave them as they are. Um, and run the game, it obviously makes sense. If I change the east-west distance to 10 and run it and run the game, then really annoyingly look what happens. The cells correctly get bigger but the horizontal lines don't and to be honest with you that's the problem we're trying to solve here. Um, what we need to do is handle those horizontal lines. They're currently statics and what we need to do is make them dynamic based on that west-east distance. Um, one thing we can notice is that for seven cells there is one space, 13 dashes and one space. If you don't believe me I've just quickly zoomed up what you see in um, the console into notepad and made it a bit bigger. So if I go across here I have seven cells, so that's um, one cell, two cells, three cells, four, five, six, seven. And the horizontal lines are space and then dashes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then finally a space. Um, and that, that's what we've got to handle. So what we're going to do now is go into the code and show you how to change a static output horizontal line into one that will grow with a wider cavern. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is give ourselves a little bit of space and let's comment out the current static output. Um, and what we need to do then is add in the first space. So this little space here um, we're going to do as a console.write, not write line, so I don't want to form a new line. I'm just going to put a single space and we can leave that hard coded. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is have a little for loop that counts out my 13 dashes or, or how many dashes I need. And what I've done is I've, I've reused count2. It doesn't matter it's being used here, it's fine. Um, it will reinitialize correctly at each loop so it's, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm saying from 1 to the distance times 2 minus 1. So that's number of cells times 2 minus 1. Remember that's how we worked it out. So that should create the right number of um, loops, of, of dashes. And then uh, we'll obviously put console.write to actually have the dashes in there. So we're going to write the dashes there. And the last thing we need to do is put in a right line for a space. So basically that's a space with a carriage return. So that um, the next little bit of loop here um, which I've actually left the previous bit of code in the cheating code because uh, if you look at 6i then I talk about the cheating because it would be good for us to test that all the uh, items are being positioned in the right place in the cavern so I've, I've left it in there but um, these loops then um, will uh, write and display the cavern correctly now there is a problem that there is still a static output here at the bottom so we need to basically replicate that code that we've just written at the top and placed at the bottom. So let's do that now, let's comment that out and copy and paste that exact same uh, code there. So I've now got a static, not a static, a dynamic line being written at the bottom. Uh, right, let's test it. Um, we'll leave NS, the two distances as they were to start with and just run it just to double check everything's okay. One looks absolutely fine, no problems. Right now let's change it to a 10 by 10 grid. 
I'm changing both just to just to make sure really and let's run the game and what we can see is other than it's being too big for the console um, I've got my horizontal lines looking correct and I guess I suppose I could count them but I can see there's one space either side that's fine the only thing I perhaps need to be a little bit careful of is have I taken into account the way that the items are positioned in the cavern well because I left my cheat on if I hit a C I'll be able to see where they are if they have are still responding correctly they should be spread out over the whole cavern rather than just in the original 7x5 grid oh, I can see that there's some way below the 5 there so uh, let's return to the main menu just do a couple of other tests just to make sense yep a bit worried there's been nothing in these last three columns let's just make sure do another couple of tests still nothing in those final three columns brilliant something there so it's just chance obviously it's a random position um, it would be worth me looking in the code to make sure that the monster and the flask could be in there but as the get random position is used for all of the uh, items I don't think there's much point in that because now I know that the whole of the, the grid had um, items in at some stage I mean I guess the last thing that's bugging me a little bit is I'm not really a fan of having two identical blocks of code as soon as I see that it's kind of shouting out for a procedure to be written and just before I started this video I did copy it into this horizontal line right so instead of um, having this block of code what I could do is just highlight it and just call a horizontal line right there and call horizontal line right there come on sort yourself out Brilliant. and for me that's quite a lot neater I'd probably leave these in as um, comments just so I can see what it's doing but um, it doesn't really matter that will still still work just as well and just to prove that one and exactly the same thing is working exactly the same things happening all I'm doing is calling this little block of code here and it slightly neatens up the display cavern so in order to change the size of the cavern yes I need to change these constants which is the easy bit but I also have to handle how these horizontal lines are written and in order to do that I have to have a dynamic line being written based on the constants okay I hope you enjoyed that pest and we're going to be looking at changing how the monster moves in the next pest um, making it so it can move three squares or just one square and again that would change the difficulty thank you very much